praises to the Most High God. Thank you, Jesus.
guitar there ever was. I'll tell you that right now. Jesus loves his air guitar. Oh 
you're so worthy, God. Oh, God, you're so able. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the good things that you do, Jesus. For the love that you have for us this morning. We praise you, Jesus.
sometimes we sing those words and it doesn't seem true for us. It doesn't seem true that God's never going to let us down because we look at our lives and it doesn't make sense and we're experiencing so many painful things and it's like, God, I thought you said you'd never let me down. But I think the key to remember is that even in the midst of the difficult times, even in the midst of the trials, is that God is sovereign, that we have to trust in his sovereignty even when it doesn't make sense. Because we only see part of the picture, we only see little pieces of the puzzle, but God sees the whole thing. And so even right now, if you're hurting, if you're in pain, if you're like, God, I can't make sense of what's happening in my life, I still trust you, I still believe in you, I still have faith that you are gonna come through for me, that you have my best interest at heart. So this morning I ask that you would have that, that you would speak that in faith, that God, I still trust you. God, I still believe in you. God, I still want to follow you even though it hurts. So God, I believe this morning that you're never going to let me down because you're sovereign. Because you, we trust in you, Jesus. God, we believe that you are always good even when life isn't good.
entertain it just for a moment. I mean, this is not practice or rehearse, so I'm just going to tell you right off the bat. But I, I'm just telling you, as I was listening to the as I was listening to the words of every song, the Lord just confirmed why we do communion. You know, and, and I, I love you guys. Need to all help me out here a little bit. So the first song, the first song, was just the great exchange. You know, and so often we don't we don't hear it that way. But the great exchange simply is the Lord giveth and He taketh away. Guess what He took away? Come on, come on, ushers, come on and ush. Let's go. We're going to just, just sing that, just sing that part, just that first song, you know, is, and maybe you don't even realize every aspect of this song is just laid out for you, for us to have communion. We're going to have communion together. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm waiting for Kelly to do her song, guys. Ready? Let's go. It's a group activity. What's the second song? Just the verse of the second of the second song you guys sang. there's so many people that we've heard that have cancer or that are in sickness or that have issues or relational problems or <laughs> family issues. Whatever is going on, God is able. God is able and he desires to do that. What was the third verse, the third song? No.
sometimes it's right in front of us and we're not even aware of it. You are so, so good. You are so, so good. Thank you, Lord. Father, we believe that you made a great exchange. You made a great exchange. And Lord, we receive that great exchange afresh today. Today. And we thank you, Lord, for that night when you were betrayed, you gave your all, and we receive your all. You said on the cross, it was finished. And when it was finished, it is complete, lacking nothing. We can't add anything to it or take anything away. You are good. Take and eat. last song, I just said hallelujah and amen, right? I think we can end up with that, right? Like the Pastor notes. cuffs in, stand up, and let's sing hallelujah and amen. Come on.
sing that one more time. Your name, your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name. We just want to welcome you to Tree of Life Church. There's actually uh, hundreds of awesome churches here at Naples. We're just a particular flavor with weird people like me. You know? You know, they allow me to come here. Hey, ain't that awesome? Right? Come on. Y'all, it's raining outside. There's no better place to be than church. Okay? Come on. 
Because if you got satellite, it ain't going to work. Those clouds. Trust me, I know. In a little black folder in front of you is a connect card. We just want to connect with you. We just want to love on you. We're not going to bug you. Go ahead and fill that out. Take it out there to the guest services desk. We've got a gift for you. Please do that. We like to know who's here. Um, we got a couple of announcements. One is tonight at 6.06. It's Growth Track 301. Why are people weird like me? Huh. You wonder why you might be weird. Maybe you're going, man, that dude annoys me. Why do I annoy you? It's because we have different personalities. God created us all different. Some of you might annoy me. Hmm. Think of that. Wow. But you know what? Because I went to growth track and understand how God made us all different. I learned to accept people. Wow. And know that people see things a little differently. And when we communicate, we know how to understand one another a lot better. We all have different personalities. And actually, it's a good thing, too, if you ever work with kids. You ever wonder why you don't get across your kid? I have one. I got a son. Me and him, we're not, we're different languages. <laughs> Understanding personalities, though, I figured out how to really better communicate with him. Sure. You really do. The other part of this class tonight is spiritual gifting. You ever wonder what's going on in your life, what's special with God? has gifted you with. You ever wonder why certain people come up to you and they pray for you and then all of a sudden you start feeling better? Right. How does God do that through them? Why? Why is it that maybe every time you see something happen on TV, your heart starts pounding and you hit the, your knees and you start praying for something happening thousands of miles away? Why does that happen? Why are you compelled to go do things with your hands, make things, build things for people? Come tonight, 606. Whether you've been here a week at this church or you've been here for 19 years since we started, if you haven't done 301, you should come tonight. Find out your personality. How God uniquely designed you. Find out where you're at in your walk with God with your spiritual gifts right now. It is very, very cool. The other one is Dr. Phil down the road, you know, they need some help. We're going to serve the community because there's only one church. And they're going to do a Harvest Fest October 31st. It's from 6 to 8. Uh, anyone who wants to volunteer, I have a sign-up sheet out there. It's like about 5.30 to 8.30 for helping set up, tear down. Please sign up. And also, we're taking candy donations. I already threw two bags in my laundry basket out there. Go out and buy some candy. This is for our neighborhood. And it's not about one church serving the neighborhood. It's about God's church serving this neighborhood and the less fortunate. It doesn't matter whose property this is on. It's all God's property. Amen. Right? So please, if you got a burden to serve this neighborhood, which you really should, sign up. Bring some candy. And lastly... Oh, Ooh, got candy. There was there, there was a, there was a sower that sowed seed, and he expected a harvest. So if I sow some seed, anybody, if I sow some seed, oh, back in the back, I need to sow some seed in the back. Look at all you guys are afraid or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Sowing some seed. Uh, Bob says, who, who, did, 
that is all. Who else needs some? Like in the back? In the back? Did you guys get some? Go Green Bay. All right, anybody else? Did I forget somebody? Oh, you guys. Open it up. Who else? We got some up here. Oh, we got a sweetheart right at the top. Wave at me. Wave at me. Oh. But listen, that's part of my sermon, so I hope you guys are as eager for the word of God as you are for King. The rest of this, the rest of this goes to the, to the kids. So I want to see a 30, 60, 100 fold return. Who did we forget? Oh. Really? That leads us to today's offering. Yeah. Yeah. Lately, every morning, I've been listening to uh, a lot of worship music, uh, particularly. Is it me? Yeah. And um, you know, in the last uh, few weeks, my mother's almost died a couple times, and she's in the hospital. Um, as you all might see, you don't see my sister hot rodding around here. She's actually in the hospital. She broke her uh, leg this past Wednesday. Um, and there's a lot of things going on. And you notice the last few weeks, and like when Elias was here, we were talking a lot about the spirit in it. And there's this one song that came out last year by... Uh, a gentleman who actually was on TV. He was on, I think it was uh, American's Got Talent or something like that. And Simon Cowell actually gave him a golden buzzer. And he wrote this song called Spirit Lead Me. You know, and he's the worship pastor at his church in California. And um, just as like today, the four songs went with communion, I want to read this as something to think about our offering, but also everything in our life. And the first verse goes, if you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. I don't want to follow my own ways. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. Amen. Amen. A lot of times, we make our choices based on feelings. We walk our lives on feelings. Our offerings are on feelings of what will happen. What will we do with or without this money? We make choices of, about love and relationship based on feelings. But if you really, really see who God is, choices are not about feelings. We are to make it. He says to choose life or death. And he doesn't say feel it out. He says make a choice. And he says also to choose life. Yeah. yeah. He gives you that. Listen, just a, kind of a reminder, if, if you're interested, Joyce has left to go to Moffitt, so she'll be there. Um, and the project in Honduras is, I mean, I think we got some pictures, I think. Yeah, but I the, got a slideshow. The, the, the project in Honduras is getting very, very close to being done. And the thing is that if you guys want to help out a little bit more to finish everything, the roof, the... Uh, the uh, concrete foundation uh, has all been completed, but the concrete inside the church, the way they do it is they pour, pour that at the end. They've, they've got the footers and everything, so you'll see some pictures. 
So we, I think we're, let's surprise Joyce while she's gone and finish this project. So, you know, it's called House of Hope. And I believe that as we, as a church, build this House of Hope, we'll give her hope as well. So if you want to give, just make sure that you put it down for House of Hope on your giving. Uh, if any of you feel led to give uh, by the Holy Spirit, to give a thousand, two thousand, whatever you feel. But that's part of the project, a hundred, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Ushers, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for what is received this morning. Lord, we know that you will multiply. And Lord, we ask you to speak to our hearts, Lord. Let us not walk our walk by feelings. Let it be by choice, by trusting and obeying your word, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for everything you do in our lives and in our family's life and in our community's life and in this church, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So John has a, a little something. You want to make an announcement about uh, about the uh, food pantry? Thank you. Every second and fourth Saturday at the food pantry, we need you. Yeah. We've got lots of food needs to be distributed, and if you would come and help, be there at seven o'clock, it would be great. So uh, maybe the best thing to do is if you're interested uh, in, in that, sign up with John at the end of the service or with Nita because that's important um, so that they can kind of check on you. If you're interested, uh, please, please do that. Um, we do that a lot here. We give food away literally every day. But uh, on that particular day, uh, the second and fourth, we, we give away to about 150 family. They all get... Uh, Meats. They get like four different types of meat. They get a uh, variety of food that, that provides for them and their family. So that's important. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, why don't you stand with me and we're in a series. Uh, we're trying to really dig into this thing a little bit about where are you? It's the title of our series, Where 
It's so much easier just to say it than to write it. R U. So, our theme scripture is from Genesis. We're going to dig into that a little bit more today. Genesis chapter 3, and I would like to uh, read that to you. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? And, and I think today I'm going to dig into this even in a deeper way. So I just want to challenge you to be aware of where you are. We are, every one of us are in some area of our lives, searching, seeking, beginning, exploring, uh, drawing closer to God. We are. The whole world is, in a sense. So we can put ourselves in these four categories. But I want us to truly just examine where we are and where we want to go. Because if you are in one particular area, God wants to take you further. So, Father, I humbly come before you today. I thank you so much for this opportunity. I ask that you would challenge our hearts, our lives. And we are here to just allow you to speak to us. Help us to hear and to receive with joy what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you turn to someone and say, I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to hear. that we talked about last week was just trying to get this thing rolling, but on your, on your uh, bulletin, one of the things that you have is you have the word fellowship, right? So then we have relationship. What's the next one? Come on. I need you guys to help me participate, unless you don't want to. Discipleship. Discipleship. And then Lordship. Notice I didn't win any prizes. Writing. So. All right, so one of the things with that is that we have these four categories. And in, in many ways, the world is in that. We're, we are all in this thing together. We talked a little bit about uh, how this right here, the first one is experiencing God and just uh, you know, exploring God. This, this, this aspect of, of being open to God, the possibility of God. Matter of fact, the world is open to all kinds of possibilities. Matter of fact, some of them are not very good. But at the same time, they're exploring. They're search, search, searching those things out. And then the next one is begin with God. Why are we humming today? Okay, so one of the things that, that I want you to be aware of is this thing of, of going on this journey. And it's important for us to dig into this a little bit more. And so we're going to deal with these later on. Uh, discipleship will be next Sunday and Lordship will be the following Sunday, the Lord willing. And one of the things that we've talked about very clearly a little bit about is how the cross kind of just fits right in here. And uh, how when we are exploring God, we're discovering something which at first we're really unsure about, which is the grace of God. Uh, sometimes we feel like, well, God's judgmental, all of those kind of things. But once you discover really, truly that God's grace has been given to us, this is where this transition takes place. And we call that grace. And that word is such a powerful word. And it means so much. We're saved by grace, not by works that any man can boast. And that's something that for us is some, sometimes so hard for us to believe. It's for us to grab a hold of and... And I, and I feel like that in some ways we even question it once we're Christians, okay? So one of the things that's really cool is to have all these snowbirds back here. <laughs> so I see them scattered all over the place. They're, they're, kinda, they're coming back. You guys tired of flying? So, so it's good to have you back. And so the aspect of this thing of grace is such an important part of our lives. And we as a church should never lose that. It's grace and truth that we really got to grab a hold of. And so this is this beginning. And, and one of the pitfalls, which we talked about, each one of these has a pitfall. And one of these things is that we, if we're not careful, we forget this aspect of grace and we begin to focus on works. Uh, and, and this is where we expect 
You know, we look down at people who are not as far advanced as we are, or at least we think they are. And so I want to ask you, what did you do to get saved? Did you do anything, or did you deserve it in any way? So, you know, the, that's the issue of really understanding that's a pitfall, and we see it in the church, we see it, it's like we are better than somebody, no, we're not. Matter of fact, the only difference between us and the world, in that sense, those that have not accepted Christ, is that we acknowledge we're sinners. Come on. That, that's really, you know, I, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved by grace. I admit that. And then now I can't add anything to it or take anything away, but because of the grace of God, I begin to understand what God wants to use me for and the gift that he wants to flow through my life. So that's the important aspect. So now let's dig into this a little bit more and as we read, now I want to tell you, you can find this and if you would like to read these, uh, I just want to encourage you to, this is in Mark chapter 4, it's also found in Luke chapter 8, it's also found in Matthew chapter 13, so let it be confirmed by two or three witnesses, Hello. okay, there's a reason, and this is why God put this in here, and he actually uh, makes it very clear that this is one of the most important parables, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this. And if you don't understand parables, you don't understand God. Right. And so here it is. Listen. What's it say? Listen. What? Listen. Listen. Behold, the sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on stony ground where it was, did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. So let's read on a little bit more here. And it says, but when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. So I'm concentrating right now on this next aspect of it, which I want you to notice is a very important principle of this one. And that is the word. And both of these are, are, are important to see in that regard. So... I want us to look at the next scripture and, and just dig into it a little bit more. It says in Matthew, so it's in also in Matthew, so it's explained a little bit for here. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. So what does it say? It says, at first it said, listen, now it says hear. When anyone hears, there it is again, hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away which was sown in the heart. Remember we talked about this last week. Now it said that it was a bird. Now if you don't understand symbolically that in the Bible it talks about birds as being demonic, about being spiritually influenced, the devil would like to immediately come and take away the word of God. That's what he would like to do. And uh, the one thing about the birds, they would come and immediately take away. The spirit wants them. The enemy does not want you to receive the word of God because the word of God will change your life. Amen. So it says here, it says, and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is who receives the seed by the wayside. So the seed represents the word of God. So we need to be aware of the word of God. We need to be able to hear the word of God. We also need to be able to be aware of the enemy. And he actually, it says... The devil is able, or the enemy is able, to take it out of our hearts. That's, that's, that's crazy. And this is why this battle is going on in church life and in our community, and why we need to be careful how we communicate, how we share, how gracious we are with people that are seeking the Lord and are trying to explore God. Because depending on how they see us, because the only Christians, some of them will never open up a Bible until... They see it in us, yeah. the Word of God being made flesh in how we live our lives. And if, we don't, if we live our lives and, you know, I mean, I see this happening all the time, even like going to a restaurant. You know, people go and they eat, they're go, they've just come from church, you know, they're all dressed up in their, in their little church outfits and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And then, they, then after the meal, they leave a track as a, as, as a tip. Do you think in some ways that that's going to impress a server? But if you pray at that table and you have a wonderful conversation and you give a tip, you have planted a seed and say, wow, that, those are Christians. But some of the Christians that they see, because if you talk to servers, they'll tell you. My least favorite people to serve is Christians. 
That is a not nice statement. Whoa, look, these guys are free. No, that means we're not getting nothing. <laughs> we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit more. Uh, and uh, one of the things about faith, it's important for us to dig into it a little bit more. So let's go on here. And does not, but when he receives the seed on stony places, this is the one who hears. Again, what does it say? It yeah. hears the word immediately, immediately, and receives it with joy. I love this, but one of the things about Sunday morning is I believe this happens all the time. I don't, there's not too many times on a Sunday morning people go, oh, that was terrible. No. <laughs> no, usually what they say, oh, I really enjoyed that. That was a good message. The worship was great. You know, it was great to be in church. And this is one of the things The when we hear the word of God, there is joy. Because there is something in our spirit that says this is true. You know, we, we talked about Arthur Byrd, who was one of my favorite ministers who passed away. Not to, he lived over 100 years old. He always says, test it and see. You don't have to believe me. But when the word of God goes forth, you can sense something about it. And, 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 and you, can be, you can be one of the most boring preachers ever. But if you're preaching the word and you're declaring, the, there's a joy that comes from it. There's truth that comes from it. And it says here, it says here, immediately receives it with joy. I, I don't, it's not, uh, not, it's not very much misery in that sense. We understand that the word of God is true. And there's this little, something inside of us leaps a little bit. And we just, we know in our heart that this is true. Yet, he has no root in himself. I want to dig into that a little bit more. No root in himself. Like we'll, st we'll, just st we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. But endures only for a while. You need, it's, it's like on Sunday, oh, I got this. By Tuesday, I'm not quite as sure. By Thursday, what, what was that message about? I don't remember what. What did he talk about? He says, it says, but endures only for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, because of what? The word. The word immediately he stumbles. Man, I had every... How many of you ever, I remember this as a teenager, I remember I would go to church on Sunday and I would hear the word of God and I'd go, that's what I need to do this week. That's what I need to do. And by Friday night I was stumbling. Maybe, maybe I'm the only one. No. You know? Come on. So, let's read on a little bit more here and see, and in... <laughs> It says, this is, not, this is more explanation of this, so I want to see, in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, seeing you will see and not perceive. Let's read on. And for the hearts of these people have grown dull, their ears and their hearts of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts in turn, so that I should heal them. I want you to notice something here. This whole thing is, this whole thing is, 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 is driven by the enemy in many ways. He does not want you to be healed. Come on. He does not want you to hear the truth. He does not want you to see what's really going on. He wants to deceive you. He wants to cause you to be dull of hearing, he, dull of understanding. And so he works on this super hard. This is what he does. And he will do it in different ways because the word of God, grace and the word of God are key for our success. And so even Isaiah, the prophet in Isaiah chapter 6 is where this is from, is communicating this. And it says here, their ears are hard of hearing. Why is it that we have that? Why is it that there's no root within us? Why is it that it, there's such shallowness? Why is it that stoniness is there? Maybe we've been disappointed. Some of us are more willing to hear the enemy than we are willing to hear God. Matter of fact, we're willing to receive words of the enemy so quickly. Like a simple one, just is that you're no good. And immediately that we just go, yeah, you're right. And God says, you are good. You are blessed. You're highly favored. And then I, we don't hear that as easy. We don't hear that as easy because 
because of the struggles that we're facing. So it's important for us to see that. Let's dig on a little bit more and see what happens next. And I want you to notice something because I, I, I want to make sure that we understand this. Again, how does it start? Give, a Give ear. ear. Listen. Oh, my people, to my law, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Whose words? God's words. I will open my mouth in a parable, and I will utter dark sayings of old. I want to tell you something. Jesus didn't start these things. Jesus didn't start parables. Matter of fact, the Old Testament is completely full of parables. Right. It's something that comes alongside. If you read an Old Testament story and you, you say, well, this, that happened such a long time ago. What does, there is a parable that wants to come alongside of your life and teach you something. Amen. I don't care where you go in the Old Testament. You can go to Joseph's life. You can go to David's life. You can go to Samuel's life. You can go to, you can go to Adam and Eve's life and see something that God's trying to share with you, a truth that will help you. So look what it says here. It says, I will open my mouth in parables, another dark sayings of old. Look at verse 3. And it says this, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Do you know, isn't that interesting too, again, about fathers? I have my father here today. Thank you, Lord, for... Uh, a father that's been faithful to the Lord and to the word. But one of the things is I used to not want to listen to him. <laughs> Matter of fact, I thought he didn't know what he was talking about when I was a teenager. And then the older I got, the wiser he got. <laughs> and the older I still get, the wiser he still is. But, but for a long time, I thought he didn't know what he was talking about. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the same thing with God. Sometimes we feel like God has no clue. The Father God doesn't have a clue what I'm struggling with, what I'm going through. He has no idea. Talk to me. You know, and it's important for us to see this. So it says here, will we not hide them from their children? Tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord in his strength and in his wonderful works that he has done. God has done wonderful things and he's been trying to teach us from the very, very beginning. He tries to teach us through nature. And some people misinterpret that. He's constantly communicating with us. So let's just look at this a little bit since this particular psalm. So let's go to Genesis since we've just talked about this and we'll, we'll talk about it in context a little bit. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Again, if you're not careful, you just read it and say, well, any beast. Well, he's referred to a beast here. But all it says here, more cunning, more cunning than the birds, more cunning than... Any demonic force, this is what it's talking about. It's not talking about the, the cow and the pig. And yeah. the, it's talking about beasts. It's talking about demonic strongholds. It's talking about beasts and, and scorpions and serpents. That's the kind of stuff it's talking about. It's, it's referring to, to that. And so here we have the beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And we'll dig in, we can talk a little bit more about that. I can take you to all kinds of scriptures where, where it communicates this. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said? What is he questioning? God. What is he questioning? The word. The word. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So let's read on a little bit more. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So he gives specific instructions to God. Sometimes we don't like rules, but God just has a couple of them. Matter of fact, I want you to imagine this. You only have one rule. One. One. Literally, that's what Adam and Eve had. They didn't have ten. They didn't have ten commandments. They had one rule. You can eat of every tree. Matter of fact, all of them, except for one tree. Just leave that one alone. Just, just one. And it don't matter if we have... It's, it's, ama it's amazing how I can tell my grandchild, I said, you can't play with that right now. That's the one thing he wants to play with. You know? You tell somebody you can't do that, and that's the one thing that they want to do. And, and, and the crazy thing is that it's not like God's trying to hurt us. He's trying to help us. But it says, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Let's read on a little bit more. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. So he's contradicting what? The word. 
For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Now, wait a minute. Just earlier we read, what is, God, what is the devil's desire? Is to keep our eyes closed. He actually doesn't want us to hear. He doesn't want us to see. He does not want us to understand. He does not want us to perceive. So actually what he's doing right now, he's lying. He's actually saying, I promise you, your eyes will be opened. Okay. So you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You know, again, like God. Let's, let's, just, let's just stop for a second. God created man and woman, and he says, I will make them in our image and in our likeness. We're already like God. Come on. We're already like Him. Matter of fact, His image and His likeness is upon us. And guess who wants to take that image and likeness away? Who wants to destroy it? The thief cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. So let's read on a little bit more. So when the woman saw, with what eyes? Saw that there was a good food and that it was pleasant to the eye, and the desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate it. I mean, this is so this is so common for all of us, the pride of life. You know, what we see, oh, this, this. How many times have I heard this from all of us, including myself? If I have this, I'll be happy. If I have this, this will fulfill me. If I could just, this, if this one situation was taken care of, then my life will be okay. Really? Every one of those things that I said like that have never satisfied me. Never. Because I'm focusing on the wrong thing. That's what the devil does. He takes our focus off what is really life-giving, what is really sustaining, what is really lasting, and wants us to focus on the temporary, on things that will... And let's read on. We'll, we'll discover this. All right? Let's, let's go on. So the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, so they really saw. Really? They really saw how screwed up they were. They really saw that the glory of God was no longer upon their lives. And they sowed fig leaves. <laughs> I, you, you ever wonder about that? Sowed fig leaves. How temporary is that? Yeah. <laughs> you ever watch Naked and Afraid? You know, it's like, it's like these guys, they try to cover themselves up. Guess what? what? What happens with fig leaves after just two days? You know, they start drying out, and before you know it, you have nothing on, it, on again. So you have to repeat, you have to repeat, you have to repeat, you have to repeat, you have to repeat. And all you're trying to do is cover something with something temporary. How many times are we going to live our lives covering ourselves with temporary things instead of covering ourselves with the Word of God? Talk to me. So it goes on in verse 8, and it says to us, And they heard the sound of the Lord. They heard the sound of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and, and Adam and his wife hid themselves. It's a completely different relationship all of a sudden. It's all of a sudden completely different. I thought that this was supposed to make them like God. Now they're hiding from God. From the presence of the Lord and among the trees of the garden. Verse 9, it goes on to say, Then the Lord God called Adam and said to him, Where are you? He knew where he was. And this is the question, is, do you know where you are? Where are you? Where are you on your journey? So he said, I heard you voice. I heard your voice. In the garden, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I want you to notice something. That's what the devil wants. You see, he wants you to be afraid of the word. When the word is what heals you. Yes. It's the word of God that will sustain you. It's the word of God that will cover you. And he has tricked us into believing the opposite. And so here it is. Let's read on just a little bit more. And he said... Who told you that you were naked? Again, who are you listening to? Where are you getting your information? Wow. Who's communicating with you? And I'm going to tell you something. Most of us have a habit of every day watching news. I don't know. Maybe some of you don't. I don't know. You, when you get in the car, you listen to it. Or when you get home. And that news is temporary. It's like a fig leaf. 
it will, it, there'll be more news tomorrow and it'll be totally different and there'll be some more news and, and it, it is fear driven, it's fear based, it's all of that stuff, yeah. it will come along and yet when you, at night when you're getting ready to open up the Bible or in the morning when you're getting ready to have your devotions, it's like you're not really super excited. Why? I don't, that's the trick of the enemy because what you're about to read is sustaining. It says, everything else will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Matter of fact, it says this, it goes on to communicate even in a deeper way. And it says, it says, my word will not return void. It will accomplish that which I desire. It will go forth and accomplish. I sent my word to heal. That's what it says. That's the scripture. I don't care where you turn. Matter of fact, the most the longest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 119, right? right? Guess what it's all about? It's about the word. From beginning to end, it's all about the the word. The word. And so it says here, it says, then the man said, uh, no, let's go. Who told you that you were naked? Who you ate from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? Then the man said to the woman, you gave to me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. So then we play the blame game. We start, instead of taking responsibility of reading the word and understanding the word, we begin to blame others for our conditions and our problems. And that's just, that really works out great. Matter of fact, you know, here, uh, uh, the woman. Okay, so it's the woman's fault. I'm thankful for ladies. Please, please, I, I really am. So verse 13 goes on, it says, And the Lord said to the woman, What is it that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ain't. All right? So the man was deceived too. Don't, they were both. I don't like this thing of playing favorites here. Uh, we're both guilty. And the idea here is that she was deceived. And the problem is, we all are deceived if we're not careful. That's why we need the truth of the Word of God in our lives. And that's why this is the pitfall, if we're not careful, is that we're not into the Word of God in a stronger way. So since I've explained this, we're going to dig into this a little bit more next week because we'll get into some thorns. We'll explain to you what the reason behind that. But let's go on right here real quick. I need to finish. Hear and joy. Hear. It is so important that you hear. But the joy of the Word of God should just explode in us. If the Word of God says something, there's a reason it says it. It's not just to, to kind of make us feel a little happy today, but it is to sustain us for life. Let's read on what it says here. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and difficulties. Why? Because one of the things it has the opportunity to do is to build faith in you, not knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Matter of fact, one of the things is that it should be the joy of the Lord should jump into us big time and say that this is, God's going to prove to me that this word is true. God's going to show me that this word, like the joy of my salvation, the joy of my salvation. God has proven to me that once I've accepted him, that the joy of my salvation, the devil would like to take it away from me. But every day God proves to me that I have a joy in my salvation. Amen. I'm better off with him than I ever was without him. And that's the joy of the Lord. It's my strength. It's my strength. But, and I want you to notice the struggle that goes on inside of us. So let's read on a little bit more. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So God says, listen, if you're not understanding something, if you're going through a difficult, open up the Bible and I'll show you a parable. I'll show you a truth that will fit right into your situation. I'll tell you what's going on. Just open it up. I mean, it happens so often. Who gives all to all liberally? It's not like, oh, God is stingy. No, he's not. Matter of fact, he says you can eat of all of my words, every one of them. You can find the word of God is so wonderful and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. 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 With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a, a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. That's a, a wind. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but if you don't have roots, the, the wind just blows you away. It's like that's what God wants. In fact, in, in one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 
Psalm 1, it says, it says, you shall be like a tree that's planted. Roots go deep. You know? And you shall meditate on it day and night. But the wicked are not so. They're driven like a chaff in the wind. That's it. So it, it communicates that to us here. Let's read on just a little bit more. So no root within himself. Can, can, this, this may be the biggest truth of it all. Within me, within me, I don't have the capability for it to stick. Within me. Now that sounds, because he's the root, I'm not. He's the root. Isaiah 53, it says, out of tender ground. Like he came like a root. He is the root of David. He is our source. He is what needs to be done. So within myself, and, and, and just being honest, Lord, I don't have it within me. So what, guess what I need to do is fill myself consistently with the word of God. Amen. Let every man be a liar and let the word of God be true. Yeah. Woo. Amen. Woo. Let it be true. So let's read on. It says here, it says tribulation. It's one of the things that happens to us. Guess what? The devil doesn't want you, so he will put tribulation. He will press. He will press you in situations and say, well, God's not coming through. What did he do? What was the, what's the thing that he did with Jesus himself? He said, if you really are the son of God. You know, if you really are a Christian, if you really have turned your life over to God, he'll press you. He'll oppress you. Because he knows that if that seed, if that seed, if the word of God, no, no, not if. When the word of God becomes a reality in you, he can't stop you. Come on. He does not want you to be healed. He wants you to be miserable. Read on. Persecution. Persecution. I remember when I first gave my life to the Lord and I would start working, you know, and, and told people that I was a Christian. Yeah, some people had laughed at me. And it was like I couldn't stop reading the Bible. I couldn't stop. But there's a hostility. There's a belief. All of a sudden that's questioned even within myself. It's almost like I'm arguing with myself. This can't be true. Yes, it is. Harassment. The devil would like to harass. He would like to hinder. He would like to stop. So let's go on. We're finishing it up. Stumble, trip over, hinder. These are all things that relate to our struggle. So he's trying to do that. He's working on for this not to take place in our lives. Because the word of God is what sustains us. Let's wrap it up. It's time to hear. It's time to hear the word of God. And even with the rain, it's time to hear. So this is what's communicated to us. But what, what does it say? The word is near. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. This is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, this is not just talking about saving you at the beginning. It's talking about salvation completely in every area of your life. Let's read on a little bit more. But with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be put Amen. to shame. Amen. See, is it, isn't it kind of strange that the devil wants you to feel shame and God says, I don't want you. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So let's just read this just a little bit and then you'll get this. For there is no distinction between Jew nor Greek. The same Lord over all and rich to all who call upon the name of the Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't care what, where you come from. I don't care what background you come from. I don't care if you're rich or poor. If you don't have your act together. What does, none of those matter. What matters is that you accept the word of God in your life. Amen. Let's read on a little bit more. And it says to us, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? Listen to what it says. Believe. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Read on a little bit more. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good tidings. This is the thing. Is God, I don't know why God has chosen preachers. I don't even understand sometimes. It's foolishness. It seems foolishness to stand up here and talk like this every day 
every week, you know, and some people think it's foolish. Look at that. Every church. But when you understand the power behind it, because I want you to, I want us to go backwards just a little bit. If we go back just a little bit, it says here, it says you've got to have a preacher. Why? Because he's preaching. It's not, it's proclaiming. So you can hear. So you can believe. So you can receive. And this is what God wants you to know. So let's, let's finish it up. Let's go back down. And it says, Their sound has gone out to all the earth. Oh, no, let's read it. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That would be a great place to stop, right? It is. Faith cometh by hearing. So guess what? They'll stop anyone who's trying to preach. Anyone who's trying to proclaim. They'll try to mess up the preacher to do it. Whatever they can. The list goes on and on. But if you're not careful, this is the message that God wants to communicate. Because he wants you to hear. He wants you to believe. And he wants you to receive the good news. That's what he wants. Their sound. It's talking about the word of God has gone out to all the earth in their words to the ends. Matter of fact, isn't that what Jesus said? He said, I will go with you even to the ends of the earth. Nowhere can you escape. Do you have an ear to hear? Bow your heads. It's not far away. It's the most important thing that you've ever heard. But Jesus loves you. That's the good news, that he gave his life for you. Believe it. Believe it. Hear it. Take it in. Believe it in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 20 years. God wants to reaffirm, my word is true. It will not return void. It will accomplish that which you desire. Matter of fact, this is another word right here. I know you understand this, but my word will not return void. I sent my word to heal. Right now, whatever situation you're going through, if you're struggling with doubt, God wants to heal you from doubt. If you're struggling with any kind of sickness, right now God says, I've sent my word to heal. Heal. Now the devil would immediately like to take that away. But I want you to go home this afternoon and I want you to claim it. I want you to know that the word of God is true. Let every man be a liar, but let the word of God be true. Let us stand. I want the ministering elders to come. I want them to be ready. I want us to, to just be open for God to, to move in our midst. And I don't always understand everything that God says, but one of the things he says in the Bible, he says, call for the elders of the church. Have the sick come, let them lay hands on them, and they shall recover. Matter of fact, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you real quick. Can you, Kyle, can you go to James chapter 5? Oh, I, I, want, I want us to sometimes... Sometimes it's so important that we don't, we, we sometimes, well, it, it's, we don't have time. Listen, you have the most important thing right now. It's not lunch. The most important thing is that you receive the word of God in your life. Go on down a little bit more, like to verse 13 or so. All right, let's go to 12, just, just in case. I, mean, I want to make sure. But of all brethren, but are you guys watching? Are you, are you watching it? Are you hearing it? Yeah. Are you seeing it? Okay. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. So simply what God wants you to know is God's very, very trusting. You can just say yes to God. Or no, okay? Is anyone among you suffering? Yeah. Let him pray. Anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Have we done that today? Okay, let's read on. 
Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Is that what it says? Yes, sir. Why do you, we, we're, we're, we're not going to hear it only. We're going to practice it. We're not just hearers of the word, but we're doers of the word. Let's read on. It says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, it will be forgiven. I'm going to tell you right now, is there anybody in this room right now that has a sin in your life that you know that you need forgiveness? This is what it said. What does it say? And the Lord, what does it say right here? It says here, if he has committed any sins, it will be forgiven. Anybody? If you, let's just, come on. If you have a sin, I guess this is where the devil plays with us. He says, no, you're not forgiven. The Bible says you are. Let every, let, don't, don't trust yourself. Trust in the word. That's what it says. Verse 16. What does it say then? Confess your trespasses one to another. That you may be. It says pray, pray for one another. That you may be healed. So it's talking about. Hey. Be in relationship. If you've got problems with somebody right now. Confess it. Say listen. I'm struggling a little bit. And guess what happens. There's healing that takes place. And then it says here. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. It's simple. Now, some of us, will, we, we can complicate it because we can read on a little bit more. I know this because I'm simply, Elijah was a man with, with a nature just like ours. What is he saying? Elijah got, got messed up too. He said, I'm the only one left. Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. You know, he had some powerful things happen in his life, but he also ran away. Okay, so it's a saying. He says, he's a man just like us. David, just a man just like us. Joseph, just a man like us. Every one of these characters in the Bible, ladies, whatever character you want to pick out, Bathsheba, whatever. It doesn't matter which one you want to pick out. Deborah, she was a prophetess. It doesn't matter which one you pick out. It says, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And I'm telling you, if you earnestly pray for whatever you need, God will come through. So let's bow our heads. Father, we're not here to go through routine. We're not here to pretend that we like the word of God. No, we believe it. We stand on it. We declare it. We proclaim it. Blessed are the feet of them that preach good news. Lord, we're declaring that the word of God is our source, our life, our hope. And we will not be deterred from it. Thank you for letting it go forth today. Thank you, Lord, that it is in our lives. Thank you that it will accomplish that which you desire. Thank you. Thank you for healing. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for breakthroughs. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for salvations. Today is the day of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. If you need to spend time in prayer, do it. Don't go out the door, come to the altar, where you can be altered.